Yo guys, today we're talking about Makarna of Bitterness, which is the 6.0 equivalent of the old 4.0 Makarna. Basically, the dungeon in terms of mechanics is exactly the same as the old one. The only things that have changed are a few quality of life changes to the better for the player, as in there's no more trash mobs, there's no more mini bosses to kill, there's no more ways to run from boss to boss. It's just a very simple, straightforward boss, 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 and that's it, you're done. Um, Today, in this video, I'm going to guide you through the dungeon. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it. And um, yeah, let's just get going, guys. But before we get going, can I just say, guys, can I just say a huge thanks to one particular player from the North American servers? She is kind enough to approach me. She was kind enough to approach me a few months ago, asking me if she can do my Spanish subtitles for my guides on my YouTube channel. How nice is that? from a player to want to help their Spanish speaking community so much that she wants to do subtitles for my videos in Spanish. So if you didn't notice my videos, my guides, not my rants, my guides have Spanish subtitles guys. And it's all thanks to a player called Zeira. She's playing a spirit master on the North American Catalan server, a Smodian side. So if you see Zeira, a spirit master, make sure to drop her a wave, especially if you're a Spanish speaking guy, because she's doing a lot for the Spanish speaking community as she is from South America. So thank you so much Zeira for, for all of your help with the subtitles um, on my guides yeah cool let's get going in the videos guys thanks were given um, how you enter Makarna it's very simple if you are the faction who occupies the fort in Lakrum you can enter it through the fort there is a portal right there Makarna has two entries a week and you cannot reset it with the pay to win method that normally you can reset everything else in Aeon which is the Luna Makarna you can reset with Makarna reset scrolls that you get after a successful siege the siege can be a defense as in you're defending the fort and you've defended successfully you still get the reset scroll or the siege can be an attack and if you attack successfully you capture the fort in your faction's name and you are there um, then you also get a Makarna reset scroll and you can reset it with that if you do not have the fort the entrance to Makarna is here if you're an Asmodian or here if you're an Ilius and with that let's just get going into the video as you enter Makarna this is the entrance there's no more mobs there as you can see however there is this NPC if you talk to this NPC she's going to uh, spawn three portals and that is the first difference in between the old Makarna and this Makarna that these three portals and the timer this timer is a 30 minute timer which you need to fit in um, killing the last boss which is Beritra. Yeah, if you do not kill Beritra in 30 minutes then the dragon will just disappear and that's about it for your run. First portal is one that teleports six people to Oris. Oris is the second boss and Oris does the same things as Oris did before. The second portal is the uh, magical DPS portal which is the first boss the magical side on the left as you look at the map and the last um, rift here the last portal is the one that teleports you to the physical dps boss where the physical dps is need to go and kill the first boss so physical dps first boss magical dps first boss and oris which is the second boss of the dungeon yeah you do not need to kill oris and you do not need to kill uh, both of these first bosses in one run as an example during this run we went as a six man don't don't even get me started why we're a six man in this dungeon because then i'm gonna have another 30 minute video talking about how the game forces everyone to low man things just because it's unrewarding and it's not that fun and you need to do four man narakalis you need to do three man holy towers and you need to do six man makarnas to even feel like a normal person getting rewards from pve in a normal time frame if you do 12 man makarnas think about this for a second i'm just gonna give you i'm just gonna throw at you some numbers if you go to makarna as a 12 man you can get from here, uh, what, it's from Makarna, it's um, two rings, one belt, that's three, two earrings, that's five, one necklace, that's six, one weapon, that is seven pieces. 
and you can get a hat which is eight pieces of pve gear from here now if all of your dps's would need these eight pieces from makarna then it would be eight multiplied by 12 and can i just quickly start to load my best friend the calculator so eight multiplied by 12 guys 12 people in the party that means you need 96 accessories to drop for you in makarna in order for all of your people to be fully geared with whatever makarna offers of course that is if you do not get any single doubles right if everyone gets their piece in one run you have to know that makarna drops a red thing once every two runs so as i told you you have two entries per week that means you get one red thing per week let's assume also let's assume for the sake of this video that you're on the faction that always wins the fourth so you have four other reset scrolls per week because you always dominate your server and you never lose a single time and you get those reset scrolls and you do makarna so you have six entries per week of makarna two normal ones and four from from winning four sieges in lock room now six entries per week divide that by two because only half of those drop you a red then that's three makarna runs per week at most that's the most you can do to enter makarna so three makarna runs that give you a red now this 96 you divide it by three because that's you know how many you, reds you get per week and you have 32 now 32 weeks you need to do this for 32 weeks six runs a week in order for you for your whole 12 man to get fully geared with whatever is here 32 weeks is more than uh, half of a year it's almost actually yeah it's more than half it's 70 percent of a year uh, calendar year just for you to get this and that is assuming you do not get any doubles because if you get doubles yeah if you if you're just missing a ring or if you're just missing a hat or a necklace or a weapon then you know you can just multiply this 32 by 2 because let's say you get doubles that's 64 weeks that's already more than a year if you do it in a 12 man setting and you always win your siege and get the scroll and participate in that siege so it is absolutely ridiculous um how how low the rates are and how much it takes for you to get something from this content that is why we're a six man group normally you do it 12 man so i'm gonna go to the magical side of things that's because we have a ranger and a gladiator that need to go to the physical side right and i'm just gonna be useless here in the magical side of things along with our sorcerer and one of our healing clerics our setup is two healing clerics me as a chanter ranger sorcerer gladiator very simple no 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 difference if you run with one dps cleric here we're just running with two healing clerics simply because our gear is not plus 15 red pve already in order for us to be able to be extremely mega safe with just one cleric if we would have one cleric full red plus 15 then absolutely no problem you can go one dps cleric one healing cleric you just need two people to dispel in the last boss so these mobs these first bosses again same as the previous version of makarna they need to be killed at the same time so pay attention to that communicate with your groups and you have to understand one thing about these portals that you saw at the beginning where were the portals um, these portals right here only three people can enter through this portal only three people can enter through this portal and only six people tops can enters through this portal what is the point of these portals their only point is to split up your group and do these bosses in a lower man setting yeah and the second point is that at the end of this boss fights at the end of these first two bosses and then at the end of oris there is a portal that spawns an entrance to the last boss room so if you're doing it in a six man you have a choice you either go all six to Oris through the Oris portal and kill Oris and then all six of you enter through the portal to the last boss or you split three and three on the first bosses and at the end you're gonna get a portal again for six people to the last boss you cannot go more than three people here why because the portal doesn't allow you to enter more than three people here and more than three people on the other side of things as well these bosses have the same stats as they used to have in the 4.0 content so obviously now they seem easier to kill and that is simply because they just have the same stats as then their ads that they spawn have the same stats as then so now those ads are basically a one shot when before you actually need to focus them because the physical ads they heal the boss and so on and so forth it drops a chest here um 
you can loot it, it has some, uh, some yellows, and then through this portal you get to go to Beritra. There is the same portal popping when you kill Oris, for the six people that kill Oris, if you're doing it in a 12 man. I don't have a recording of Oris, and that is simply because, guys, we're just not doing Oris, it is not uh, a must to kill him in order to get to Beritra. Killing Oris is just another way of spawning a portal for the other six if you're doing it in a 12 man. So you have to understand that if you're doing, for example, Beritra, if you're doing Makarna in a nine man setup, then you have to understand that some people are gonna have to go to Oris. So you can do one super geared sorcerer on one boss, solo, no healer. You can do one super geared assassin on the physical boss, solo, no healer, or one super geared chanter. That class can also, let's say, solo that first boss really quickly. And then you can have the other six people go to Oris and then your six plus two, eight man Makarna. So this is how you need to split, yeah? So you can actually use the portals. Cool. Beritra, the human form, also has the previous Beritra stats because as you can see, he goes down really fast. You need to get Beritra to under 50% in order for him to go away and transform into the uh, dragon. That is the last stage. So having that said, guys, these mobs spawn, the ones that pull you. You remember these mobs. Uh, one person goes out and kills that mob for no particular reason. Uh, I am the one that does that for the first time. The boss right now during the first phase, he doesn't have a shield when this mob comes right when the dragon spawns. He doesn't have a shield. So you don't really need to kill this mob. You can just DPS the boss. However, I always go outside and kill it because I'm afraid that otherwise the dungeon is, ju is just simply gonna bug. That's one reason. And the second reason are these ads, these ghost ads, right? They don't disappear unless you kill that mob. So if they don't disappear, they keep pulling people and so on and so forth. This bomb, the explosion for this bomb also has preserved its previous stats in terms of how much damage it does to you. Now it does nothing when before it did quite a substantial amount of damage in 4.0. These ads that you see in the room right now, these ads have also kept their previous patch properties it's kind of weird to, to keep saying that but it's, it's just how it is the only thing that was changed and updated to 6.0 damage and and content and stuff is the dragon beritra the first boss is as it for, was in 4.0 the second boss oris is as it was in 4.0 you can now easily burst it with six people in the first um in, in the first feeble phase in the first weaken phase that he has because you know oris has three phases First, he's invulnerable as you go in the room. One minute later, he's vulnerable and it lasts for one minute of vulnerability. Then again, he becomes invulnerable for one minute and then vulnerable for two minutes and so on and so forth. It goes in stages. Before, we could burst Oris down in the second two minute vulnerable stage. Now, you can just burst Oris down in literally 30 seconds. So that's in the first uh, half a minute when 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 when. when uh, when he becomes vulnerable. Again, there's a shield phase on the dragon. These mobs pop, we go out, we kill the thing, we get the bomb, we remove the shield, and that's about that, and that, that's about it. That's that's the that's the whole mechanics here. As I've told you, these ads that Beritra is spawning, that the dragon is spawning, have kept their previous properties. So right now, if you're a Templar kiting these ads, if you do it in a 12-man setup and you have a Templar kiting them, you can just stand still. The ads don't do any damage to you. It's just 20 points of damage per attack. You know what I'm saying? So if you're a Templar, just take aggro and just stand still. There's no need to run anywhere, really. Um, you, you get the debuff when the ads explode, sure, like we got, but you can just have it dispelled by your cleric. So absolutely no problem, yeah? The transformation to Balur, as you guys can see, is still a thing here. This transformation also does a lot of damage, damage which is updated. All the mechanics in the Beritra fight are updated to 6.0. So the AoE, like this one, very important. Close of the Dragon Lord, depending on the translation in, in, in North America. This is an important thing. It's a, it's a group-wide AoE. It is targeted on one person and all of the members around that person get this AoE. That's why some groups prefer, for example, one DPS bard stays there, one cleric stays here, and the rest of the group stays here, because then they split the AoE. If it comes on the bard, only the bard gets it. If it comes on the cleric, only the cleric gets it. So you get my point, yeah? Close of the Dragon Lord. This is an AoE. Three times um, always. In terms of um, other mechanics, there is another AoE. Um, I hope we're gonna get the chance to see it here casted. There is the Black Spots 
on the ground these th these black spots also do a substantial amount of damage they've been updated also to 6.0 content so these things you, you just need to call them out it is very simple to call out for a guy that always targets the boss and um, the clerics can just simply deal with it dragon lord's roar this is the second aoe i'm happy that we got to see it um again three times aoe on the group members and that's about it it's the black spots and it's the two AOEs that you need to call out. Other than that, there's another little AOE. It's a room-wide AOE. Um, when the boss Beritra jumps with all four legs in the room, then he does another AOE. That is the cue for you. I forgot the cast name. Doesn't not not very important. You're not gonna die from that. You take 10% of your HP as damage. Dragon Lord's Wrath. This is the one that I'm talking about. See, um, it's not. A huge amount of damage so yeah you can call this one out also if you wish and other than that guys th this is basically it this is the whole fight now it's the going out phase again where people need to stack together because during the going out phase see the boss also does uh, regular mechanics like for example this one mastery of midnight this is important because it so happens that if you're going out this thing is gonna pop and this thing is gonna transform you into baluers or at least some of your members and this needs a double dispel yeah two people actually four people have been transformed into baluers and uh, see that's my point it needs dispelling so if you're just rushing out and two of your clerics get pulled back in by those ghost ads then you need to keep in mind that those clerics cannot dispel you if you're over the fence and you're also gonna get transformed into a balloon yeah it is very important to keep the guy that's carrying the buff alive because if you if 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 you if you fail to break a shield with the bomb then the boss will heal for 10 percent and if you're kind of right in time if you're not fully red plus 15 pve gear by now and you don't have uh, nine minutes left on the timer uh, in a six man then you should worry about boss healing 10 percent uh, if you do not have the damage so keep the guy with the buff alive it is very important that's about it guys how is our how are our clerics dealing with these ads these ads obviously are the ones that um, these are the ones that cast a healing debuff on you there's the ones that um, that bind you and uh, then there's the second ones and then there's the third type of ads that come at uh, under 25 percent those that paralyze the whole group so how do we do this it is actually very simple one cleric is standing here which is towards this side on on my screen Screen, um, and then all of the other five of us just stack here so when those paralyzing ads come it is my job to take those ads and get them on myself and then that means they are on the group so the cleric that's free behind the second cleric um, is free to dispel one of the other clerics that gets paralyzed and then everyone gets dispelled after that so it's super simple uh, if you just have a guy to just pull those paralyzing ads towards you or if you don't want to if you don't want to pull those ads there then you can stay all of the group here and then the other one of the clerics here or you can even have one cleric here at the fence you can have the group here and you can have a, a DPS bard, let's say, standing a little bit further so that, you know, the, 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 the paralyzing ads go on the healer normally um, and then the bard can just dispel the healer and it is absolutely very simple, yeah. In our case, we have two healers, so you never know which one heals at that time, which one gets the healing aggro from those ads. So that's why it's safer for me to just range pull um, the paralyzing ads to me. I'm not sure if if we're gonna get to actually see those paralyzing ads in 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 uh, action. These are the binding ones, and yeah, there we go. These are the paralyzing ones. And as you can see, one is already on us because he spawns very close here. The other one I pull, and the third one I go and pull as well, just to be safe, just to have all three on us. The gladiator here does his AOE part of his DPS rotation, and. <laughs> That, that's about it uh, very simple and straightforward in terms of drops guys and in terms of um actually <laughs> just show you the fine in terms of drops and in terms of um, um, class composition you can go with anything as long as you have two classes to dispel it's either cleric cleric or cleric bard 
it's very simple it is how it is um you can take a dps templar instead of the gladiator absolutely no problem if he's amazing dps uh if you're uh, i don't know fully plus 15 red geared you can even do it five man makarna i believe maybe maybe even four man if you're so up to par uh i want to talk about another thing the luna cheer is kind of a must here in terms of uh stats the luna cheer helps you a lot so that's an easy pay to win thing that you need to do here if you want a low man or if you want to do it sooner than your gear allows you to um, it is very important in this dungeon to have at least 13 and a half thousand accuracy or magical accuracy uh, respectively i believe that is very important in order for you not to miss a single skill 13 and a half or 13k unbuffed um by the luna cheer and then a 14k with the luna cheer that would be ideal to have 14k uh, accuracy and magical accuracy after the Luna Cheer. In terms of other stats, physical attack, crit strike, who cares? The more the merrier, boys, right? Um, so th that's that's the basic idea. Cool. Um, in terms of drops, where are we? In terms of drops, guys, um, Makarna drops accessories, uh, hat included, and weapons. This is very important if you want to put a GG weapon under your PvP weapon. The Makarna weapon is very, very nice to have. Um, accessories from here are also very, very nice to have. They are the best in game in terms of PvE. Makarna also drops occasionally, once in two runs, maybe once in three runs. Uh, it drops a red pv enchantment stone it's kind of a myth to tell you the truth it's a bit of a lesser myth than the one from pvp from sieges because you know apparently from a from a winning siege box you can get a red pvp enchantment stone uh, never happened in two months of this patch however um it is how it is it's aeon after all and that's about it. It drops also two purple PV enchantment stones all the time. It drops two purple pieces of uh, accessories and weapons all the time. And uh, very important, this uh, event bundle. This is the um, most important thing ever, yeah? Um, yeah, and that's about it, guys. Let me show you the dark side of things, guys. Uh, where are we? I have another video which shows you um, another side of things, yeah? I think it was this one here. This is another run that we had, another six man run, guys. Can we play it, please? Please. No, we cannot play it. Ah, no, it's not this one, guys, it's this one. Sorry, my bad. This was another run that we had not so long ago, guys. Uh, this is a bit of a different setup. However, the boss, Beritra, bugged. Uh, it bugs very often, guys, because every single PvE content in this game, in this patch, is completely and utterly bugged. So how the boss bugged is at one point he got the shield and there was no mobs that spawned in the room. I think it was kind of like 70% or something. So... Yes, this is the shield and this is where I started to get confused, right? Because this shield popped, there was no mobs in the room and there was absolutely no mob to kill to remove the shield. So we were just left there standing looking at the boss for one minute and then after that obviously he healed 10% of his HP. So that is also a, a thing to notice. And then after, the, after he healed... Absolutely nothing happened until the boss was actually dead. So we were just sitting here in one place and DPSing because this dungeon, uh, same as Narakali, same as Holy Tower, same as... Uh, actually, Prometon is not really that bugged, only sometimes. Actually, excuse me, Prometon is also bugged, never mind me. Every dungeon is bugged, same as Makarna, so you can get this bug, I'm just saying you. I'm just telling you so, uh, so you know, yeah? Cool. One other thing, since I remember now, I remember to talk about another thing. Where is my... Uh, there is a buff that the boss gets under 25%. This buff right here, this is not a shield. It's so it's also blue and black, but this is not the shield, right? It's a buff that increases the boss's attack speed. So whoever is tanking is going to take a lot of bubbles from the boss's mouth very fast, yeah? This, this is the AoE phase, but let me see if, you can, um, if we can catch the buff in action. Here it is. Very fast attacks, as you can see from the boss on the tank. Luckily, the boss also casts very often things, so the tank is kind of safe. In this case, it was a sorcerer. But anyway, I'm just saying, guys. And that's about everything for my Makarna guide, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching. If you're subscribed to my channel, by the way, guys, click this bell right here and select 
all save and then you're gonna get notified every time I upload a video not just occasionally once a month and then you see one of my videos and the other nine you don't and you're wondering why do I say this and that so don't forget guys to turn on notifications for my channel I'm going to upload a lot of um, 7.0 videos in the following days weeks and up until uh, i believe the first of january um, i'm really much looking forward to sharing that experience with you the same as i shared 6.0 and uh, we're going to talk about new class we're going to talk about new zones and so on and so forth guys um, in the meantime lots of love as always and uh, thank you again for watching see you soon